Hey, what's up? I am God. This is Seven Mortal Sins. I am here once again to tell you about the update. Uh, it is Tuesday. There is another update. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into it. We still have our daily login bonus for Bride Leviathan. She's still here. Um, and then we have uh, Bunny Suit Asmodeus, or Reverse Bunny Asmodeus. Uh, she's here. She's got a power-up program. Uh, we got the Shining Stars, so this event is um, kind of like a, a Star Shard grind. Uh, we can jump into the shop. Um, you can kind of get some Star Shards here, uh, but I think stamina-wise it's more efficient to go farm just the regular Star Shard stage. Uh, but... Um, if you already have some star shards and you're looking for better stats, uh, then you can go ahead and pick up these refined crystals. These will re-roll uh, your substats on a star shard, but your star shard has to be uh, max level. It can be, you know, any rarity, any um, uh, star value, I guess, you know, like one star, two star, three star, four star, five star uh, star shard. Uh, but as long as they're max level, you can go ahead and re-roll uh, the substats. It won't change the main stat, um, but uh, this is a good way, like if you're looking for more speed rolls or whatever on your substats for your star shards, uh, this is the way to do that. Alright, so going back here, um, Bride Leviathan's power program is still here, the Dead or Love event is still live and that is pretty much it for that uh, weekly bestsellers I've got some packs here always go claim your freebie ticket every day uh, charge bonus I mean if you're gonna be spending money I guess go for it um, but uh, let's go ahead and jump into the banner now um, Bride Leviathan and OG Leviathan are still here. This is still a very solid banner. Uh, and the new banner is Ace of Bunny for Bunny Asmodeus. On this banner, you're going to have Bunny Asmo and OG Asmo. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cover OG first. So she is a support character. She is immune to enchant and charm. And when the battle starts, she gives her uh, whole team charm immunity for three turns. So just having that uh, blanket immunity is very nice. Uh, Devil's Tempt, when defeated, casts charm on the enemy with the highest attack for three turns. And reduces the move gauge of two enemy targets with the highest move gauge by 75%. Um, personally, I don't like uh, the when defeated skills. Uh, I like to have my casts live, um, but this is a pretty solid skill when she does go down. Then her ult um, inflicts soul harvest, uh, increases the target's skill cooldown by one, which kind of just delays one of their moves a little bit. Uh, after the action, inflicts gash on all agility type allies for two turns, and recovers the HP of all agility type cast with the lowest HP. So Gash just increases uh, damage dealt um, by 25% last two turns. Again, it only inf uh, only gives that to agility type uh, allies. Um, her skill two, uh, Deadly Kiss, deals damage, inflicts slow, which is uh, speed down, and reduces move gauge by 45%, hits three enemies, it also removes Iron Wrist and Keen, which are um, strength and crit rate buffs, respectively. And then she charms two strength type enemies with the lowest HP. Uh, her skill one hits three times, inflicts crackdown, and if she's hitting a strength type target, uh, decreases the skill cooldown of two agility type allies with the highest move gauge by one. Uh, if the target is affected by Soul Harvest, uh, which 
Um, comes off of her ult. Uh, inflicts Reaper and Charm on the target. So Reaper is a DOT and Charm is Charm. Um, so she's kind of a blue support, blue anti-red. She's gonna help out your agility type allies a little bit more. She's gonna um, focus uh, strength type enemies. Um, so she's not a bad character. She's kind of fallen off in PvP a little bit, but if you're ever up against uh, anyone who's using a charm team, or if you're in Vortex of Torment and there's a uh, charm at the start of battle, uh, this is kind of a character you want as just like a, a generic anti-charm character. Uh, and then Bunny Asmo. Um, so when I was first reading this, her kit, I was a little confused as to whether or not she was actually good. Like, it was kind of hard to break down, and, you know, at the end of it, I was just like, ah, this is kind of sus, honestly. Like, I love her art, it's fantastic, um, but she doesn't seem that, that great to me. Um, shout outs to Lord Levy on the Discord, uh, link in the description, uh, for kind of working me through the kit to kind of understand it a little bit better but at the end of the day i still don't think it's very good this isn't a character you're gonna look at and be like oh my god this is what i was missing this is the missing piece for my team she's so good no um we'll go over it she just still kind of feels a little bit all over the place to me um and you'll see why and i'll kind of try to break it down for you so when battle starts, she grants uh, gains immunity to charm and enchant, lasting for the whole battle. Same as base as Modius, but she doesn't give charm immunity to your whole team. Uh, what she does is she gives wide defense uh, to your whole team, and what's what that's going to do is reduce the damage taken by specifically AOE attacks, not not regular attacks, but only AOE. Uh, which is still pretty good because AoE is very common. Um, and then she taunts the three enemies with the highest attack. So, start of battle, she's going to have like the whole goon squad on your opponent's team coming after her. Which is kind of nice because it takes pressure off of your team. But at the same time, she's probably going to die. Alright, so, um, Reverse Dealer deals uh, 250 attack as counter while taking damage. So, she is a taunter, so she's got that counter attack, which again is pretty nice. But at the same time, when you're taunting your opponent's three highest attack enemies, um, I just don't know how she's going to hold up. Like, her defense is above average, her HP is above average, yeah, you can build her... Uh, like tanky, you can give her like a bunch of HP, you can give her a bunch of defense, um, and she's decently fast, she's not the fastest, um, but I, w without like dedicated support, uh, I don't see her really sticking around for too long, and if you have to have supports to make your support work, that's kind of sus in my opinion. Um, and her counter damage only deals uh only works within her first two turns um so that just explains what wide defense does i already did that uh so now her ult down the rabbit hole uh deals damage inflicts charm hits two enemies this is her only skill that charms base asmodeus i think had at least two skills that charmed um bunny asthma only has one and it's only on her ult uh, after the action, grants the caster Bunny Fortitude, um, and grants Fortitude on all allies. So, Fortitude reduces damage taken by 40%, lasting for two turns. This is very nice. Uh, Bunny Fortitude, if any ally is below 50% while taking damage, restores all allies' HP by 35% of the caster's max HP, which is... it's okay... But, at the same time, if they're below 50%, 
um i feel like you kind of need the healing to go off like before that like if it were to go off like maybe before the attack because there's a chance that they like might not survive um like that's it, that could be a little bit better uh but this is my favorite part of the of the skill right here this effect will last until it wears off this skill work until it don't like <laughs> okay um it, okay give me like a, a turn limit or something like uh it, it just work until it don't okay cool uh okay so her skill two seductive kiss hits three times inflicts compulsive gambler so her skill two is probably the best part of her kit right here um so it removes all allies heal block which kind of ties in with her s3 um increasing her healing effectiveness uh, essentially um I, I say that but it just means she maintains her healing effectiveness not necessarily that she gets better at healing it's just that she doesn't get worse because of heal block um increases the skill cooldown of three enemy targets with the highest attack by one uh, which is pretty nice um i'm not sure if that works super well though because I think skill cooldown and skill CT uh, might be on like two separate things so it won't if it's work if it works the way I think it works it won't really stop your opponent from like doing their s2 or their s3 it'll just delay like their next rotation um, I could be wrong about that but uh, if this is the way I think it is, this uh, isn't super great. Uh, so Compulsive Gambler, uh, again, this is probably the best part of her kit, like this status right here. So it lasts for two turns, uh, and this is a debuff that she puts on three enemies. Um, so those three enemies, during two of their turns, uh, when they take damage and after they attack, there's a 50% chance to inflict fragile, there's a 50% chance to increase skill cooldown, and there's a 70% chance to inflict headwind. So that means anytime they get attacked, anytime they attack, there's a chance that one or all of these uh, debuffs will go off. And fragile is really nice because it increases the damage that they take. Headwind is also very nice because it shuts off uh, move gauge buffing. However, I would just prefer to bring a character that has innate headwind. Somebody like OG Raphael, who opens with it. Somebody like Cherry Seer, who opens with it, uh, so that I'm not relying on a skill to have a chance to inflict headwind. I would rather just bring a character that does it um, and then Fragile, again, you can just bring a character that inflicts Fragile and has maybe something else that they can do. Um, like OG Leviathan is a speed uh, support for your team with her Jealousy Vortex. She also inflicts Fragile, she also inflicts Bleed, she also inflicts Freeze. Um, so, like, that would be something I would rather have on my, on my team. Um, but, you know, having those two things together is not bad. Alright, so her skill 1 hits three times after dealing damage. There is a 15% fixed chance to inflict taunt. That is very, very low. Like, you might, it might as well just be zero. Like, honestly, like, it's, it's such a negligible chance oh like oh it might happen i mean she taunts three enemies at the start of battle and then she has like a random chance to inflict taunt again which is unnecessary so after the action she restores two allies with the lowest hp by 170 percent uh of her attack which is pretty nice however you're gonna want to build her bulky um so like this healing isn't gonna be like phenomenal. 
um, because you're gonna need to build her bulky to survive taking on your opponent's three strongest um, teammates. So, like overall, a very disappointing kit, to be honest. Um, but I love the artwork. She's like one of my favorite characters uh, aesthetically. Um, and it just kind of makes me a little sad that her kit is, um, in my opinion, barely usable. So, is what it is. Take it with a grain of salt. Uh, if you really want her, I'm not going to tell you to not pull on her. Uh, I'm not going to tell you to not summon because, I mean, look at this. Like, how how can you not? I mean, if if I had gems to pull, I would be pulling because I love Asmodeus. Um, but outside of that, probably the best thing to come back around is uh, Vortex of Torment. Thank you. Love to see it. Love Vortex. Uh, one of my favorite game modes. It's um, it's almost like a roguelike kind of thing. Uh, you pick 30 characters, uh, and then you kind of go across this board with keys that you get from day to day. Um, and each stage is going to have a gimmick. So right here you can see um, you need to bring three agility characters for this uh, stage to get all the bonus. Uh, when the battle begins, inflicts block heal and removes shield. This one was uh, inflicts charm on all allies and inflicts defense break on all allies. Like this one up here, taunts all allies. Um, so you just kind of like make your way around the board. Um, and what I would highly recommend doing is bringing um, like obviously the characters you have built, like your main DPS, your main supports. Um, but the most important thing is to bring one of every character that gives your team an immunity. So. For example, this first one, uh, well not the first one, the second one here, perfect example, right? You can see, uh, it would be over there, over there, over there for you guys. Um, look over there, uh, battle begins, charms all allies for two turns. Asmodeus, we were just talking about that earlier, perfect character for this. You just, you don't even have to have her built, honestly. Um, you just slap her in your team and you get to ignore this, this um, uh, stage gimmick here. Like up here, dazes all allies for two turns. You just bring a character that gives your team days immunity. And uh, just real quick, uh, I'm gonna go over characters with immunity for you guys so you can know who to bring for Vortex. I think the easiest thing to do would be to jump into the Soulpedia. All right, so obviously Asmodeus has um, charm immunity uh, for herself and for your team. So you would want to bring someone like her. And then kind of going down the list, new, uh, let's see here. We got, um, most of the characters are gonna be Awakers, uh, honestly. So, um, Charles gives your team freeze immunity. If there's a stage that freezes your team, you just slap her on your team uh, and you're good to go. You don't even have to have her built. Um, let's see, Chocolate Nona has confuse um, immunity for your team. Again, just slap her on there, make sure you have uh, some of these characters, you can have an easier time in Vortex. Uh, Luciana, um, battle starts, gives move gauge decrease immunity for two turns. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Daniela has taunt immunity for your team. Let's see. Uh, Shalimar um, has enchant immunity for your team. Um, Clarice uh, cleanses DOTs, which is pretty nice. 
Then Zoe is another character with uh, freeze immunity. Uh, kind of going down. Um, let's see, did Evelina have anything? No. Uh, who else was it? Uh, was it Svetlana? Nope, she's got nothing. You would think I would know this after doing my four star tier list, but yeah. Um, so, Matina is another character with Enchant Barrier if you don't have uh, Shalimar. Um, let's see. Uh, K gives you Team Days immunity. Um, Noach gives you Team Confuse immunity if you don't have uh, Chocolate Nona. Uh, I think Rufina also has one. Uh, she's got Freeze Barrier as well, if you're missing a character with Freeze Barrier. Um, and Sylvia has Daze Barrier, if you don't have uh, K, but you probably have K. You should. Ooh, look, I have a rank up. Nice. All right, and I think that's all the characters uh, with immunities. If I missed one, please let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, you just want to slap on one of every character uh, with immunity, uh, team immunity, bring your main DPS, bring your main supports, and that should fill the 30 characters that you need for Vortex. Um, but best of luck. I think that's it for this update, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.